as countries across Europe suspend use of the Oxford AstraZeneca jab over blood clot fears. British scientists have hit back, insisting the vaccine is safe. So let's talk to the Deputy Chair of the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunisation, Professor Anthony Harnden. Um, very good morning, good morning to you. Good morning, Yeah, good, good, to, good to see you, Professor Harnden. And frankly, uh, we need some uh, reassurance right now. Because when you have countries like France, Spain, Portugal, Italy and Germany all saying they are going to pause their AstraZeneca vaccination programme, there will be people here saying, is the AstraZeneca jab safe for me to take? Yeah, and I fully understand that. Um, safety is the paramount importance of any vaccination programme. We've immunised uh, 11 million or more doses of AstraZeneca vaccine to date in the UK, and we are not seeing any increase in signals in blood clots between the vaccinated group and that what you would expect in the general population. Moreover, our regulator, the MHRA, um, JCVI, which I sit on, who review the evidence regularly, the European Medicine Agency and the WHO have all come out and said this vaccine is safe. Clearly, we need to keep a very close monitor of this situation, and we will do going forward. But what I would say, Susanna, is that it's really important to remember that COVID is a vascular illness and causes clots all over the body. And so the risk of developing blood clots from COVID far, far exceeds any potential risk um, from the vaccination. Professor, um, but we will keep a close eye on this. Professor Harnden, uh, you have been clear, our scientists over here have been clear, Dr Hillary in the studio has been very clear with us that there is no correlation, there is nothing for us to be scared of. What are the scientists in these countries not sharing with their politicians, which is allowing the politicians to make this decision? Because, of course, it just creates unease around this vaccine. Well, I think you'll remember, um, and I've been on your show a couple of occasions, um, speaking to Susanna and yourself and, and your predecessors, um, about the Israeli data, the delayed Pfizer dose, the, the, the not using the AstraZeneca in the older people because, according to Macron, it was quasi effectual. So there is a sort of history of this with the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine in Europe. And, and, and I, I'd have, I'm not privy to their data, so I don't know. But, but clearly, the, if they have data, you which is our friends, concern, you must have colleagues and friends who are international European scientists that I would imagine you see reports like this, you must have phoned them up and said, what, what's going on? Why are they doing this? Well, the, the, of course, a lot of this data is confidential, so it does come through regulators. So our MHRA will be doing this. They will be, they will be uh, working together with their European colleagues to be sharing data and to find out what, what the, the issue is there. Um, but at the moment, they are telling us, and the data that they have shown us on the JCVI gives me absolutely no cause for concern that this vaccine is anything but safe and effective. Um, AstraZeneca has reported 37 blood clot related events out of 17 million people who have been vaccinated so far. You say that there is no increase in blood clots amongst the vaccinated groups compared to the non-vaccinated groups, if you make that comparison. What then is Norway, for instance, seeing which has raised this concern? Well, you see, we don't really know that. They are obviously seeing cases of blood clots which are giving them concern. And we don't know quite what the frequency is, what the subtype in the population that they're seeing them in, what the type of clot that they're seeing. All this information we need to find out because, of course, each population is, is different um, is genetically different, is geographically different, uh, and it may be that vaccines work differently in different populations. So we just need to find that information out. But from our own experience of 11 million Oxford-AstraZeneca vaccines, as you say, Susanna, we are not seeing increased rates of blood clots over in that we, that we expected in the, popula in, in the general population. So, OK, so in Ireland, health officials said there had been a small number of reports of blood clots none of them as serious as those described in Norway, but still health officials reporting blood clots. I mean, are we missing something here? So it does seem strange, doesn't it, that in Northern Ireland, the chief medical officer has come out and said that the vaccine is safe and effective and is not going to show blood clots. So in part of the island of 
uh, part of North, uh, part of the island of Ireland, mm. they are immunising still. So, so I, we. I don't want to criticise my European colleagues because I think they're they're almost certainly doing this in good faith. But we do need to see that data that they're they're finding and try to understand why their decisions are different to ours. You, it may be that this is a temporary decision on behalf of the uh, Europeans and that they will reverse it over the next few days. That I don't know, but we'll be very, keeping a very close monitor of this situation. Yeah, well, your hesitancy to criticise them uh, causes us concern as well, though, because we need your absolute confidence in regards to this vaccine. We need your absolute confidence in all of the information that you're sharing with us. And it makes, you know, seemingly you don't know what they're talking about and where their statistics are coming from and, and also the cases that they're talking about. But if you could be more critical, then we would be reassured by that. Um, I understand that you have maybe there's a professional sort of relationship that you don't want to tread on their toes. But seemingly that hesitancy affects all of us. There'll be people this morning waking up who maybe have their jab planned for tomorrow or for Thursday. Some of our colleagues here are as well. And any of these headlines will cause concern for them. Well, you know, Ben, I, I, I spent all Sunday immunising with the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine in my practice for my patients that I've looked after for 30 years. I have no doubt that this vaccine is safe and effective. I would not give it to my patients if I thought there was any chance that there was be um, a major side effect that would come out. So I, 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 I'm not, I don't believe that. I believe the vaccine is completely safe. What I don't understand is the nuances behind the Europeans' decisions and their data. And that will become apparent over the next few days, I hope, and will be filtered through our regulator. So the so message to the public at the moment yeah. is that this vaccine is completely safe and effective. We've done 11 million doses. We're not seeing increased number of blood clots in the vaccinated population. And anybody who is receiving that Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine today should receive it with absolute confidence. It will protect them against developing COVID, which is a severe disease which causes vascular and blood clotting problems. Yeah, uh, you couldn't be clearer. Um, and I, I've got my vaccination book this week. I will be going along with full confidence. I think it's absolutely essential if you're able to take the vaccine and you're offered it, that you take it. Uh, it is the thing that's going to protect our lives. It's saving lives already, we know that. And it's going to lead us out uh, eventually of this lockdown. But just finally, before we let you go, there will also be people this morning watching this thinking, this is political. This is because the EU messed up their vaccination program and they are now just, um, you know, slinging more mud at our AstraZeneca Oxford jab. Is that something that you find yourself thinking? Well, whether it's political or not, what I do know is it's going to cause umpteen damage in the Europeans. The Europeans are so far behind us in terms of their vaccination program. Once you halt a particular vaccine like this, it is very difficult to regain confidence in the public. Yeah. And this start stop um, method, which they've used uh, in, in, in conjunction with their limited supply, has me meant that we are seeing third waves of the um, pandemic right way across Europe now. And so this is causing all sorts of problems where we in the UK have stuck very steady. We've rolled out the vaccine at speed. We've made some bold and some correct decisions and we will carry on doing that and protect the UK. But of course, it is a global pandemic, and it does worry me that the, the way that the Europeans are approaching this vaccination programme is going to be problematic for Britain eventually okay. if we don't get Europe vaccinated as well.